Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. Today I will be taking a swing at the Arwing Pro, which is quite unusual for me, as I'm not really a big fan of flying wings and I do try to avoid them. But this one came very highly recommended by a lot of you, and it coincided with the release of the special edition, which is white, and I do prefer white foam to black, mostly because of the color and the fact that it gets pretty toasty around here comes summertime and the black just heats up as hell. Now, I've heard the claims that the white foam is not as tough as the black one due to whatever reasons, but mostly because of the Ichin name attached to it. At this time, I cannot comment on that due to the lack of a black version of the plane in my possession to compare, but from my experience so far, this foam is quite good. I just hope the time never comes when it will be put to a serious test. Right off the bat, I can tell you that somebody definitely put a lot of thought into designing this so you wouldn't be forced to be cutting holes, digging out foam and just overall wondering where to install gear, as it used to be the case with flying wings. There is plenty of space in general and a ton of compartments and recesses made specifically for that purpose and it does make a difference when it comes to arranging the gear. Working on equipping this plane was surprisingly pleasant as there was a compartment for everything and it didn't end up cluttered or in one place which does make for a cleaner build. In general, a good deal of work has been done in the factory, which means you have very little assembling to do in order to put the plane together, but it did strike me as odd, given everything else, why they'd left the control horns and control surface sparse for us to glue on. Only reason I can think of is to prevent the control horns from doing damage to neighboring foam during transport. Other than that, I also added some glue to the wing tips before screwing them in. I know some people may like to disassemble the plane, but I don't think I will need to, at least not for the time being, and I do feel better gluing them on there since I know they won't be coming off anytime soon. Like I already said, the foam feels pretty good. It is stiff but still flexes enough to be able to take a beating without breaking off or squashing, which is reassuring. I found all of the different compartments made the assembly so quick and straightforward, but at some point I realized why this build was going so quickly for me. I forgot to take the initial photos I usually put in the what I like and what I don't like sections in my blog and went straight to the build, but at least I enjoyed it a lot more due to the fact that it took a lot less time having skipped that part of the photo shoot. Now, I did use all of the plug and play electronics, but did not use the NX3 flight stabilizer provided with my set, as there were some negative comments from a few of my peers, hence I decided against it. I went with the Matek H735 wing instead, and to be honest, I don't regret it. I placed it sideways at the back of the main bay for wiring convenience, and so I can have easier access to the SD card. And this time did not forget to change the flight controller's orientation setting and to let it know that it has been rotated, which helped avoid accidents and weird behaviors during the Maiden. One thing I did not consider at the time though was that putting the video transmitter and routing the FPV camera cables through the left compartment would get those cables running literally past the battery power cables since in order to have access to the SD card I had to rotate the flight controller accordingly which put the power cables on the left side as well. Initially I forgot to install the antenna tracker module so during the maiden I did not have the tracker running but for the second flight I did install it and even though video was very nice up close, the power cables were now running right next to the Telefly Pro Board 2 and trying to go long turned out to be an issue. I wasn't able to get out more than 4 kilometers, and I am thinking it is because of all that power cable and video cable tangling. I will sort that out and will move the video gear to the right compartment so it wouldn't even come close to the power cables and in turn would move the Dragonlink 868MHz receiver to the left one. And yes, I did say 868MHz receiver because it is now running the latest beta firmware from Dragonlink, which supposedly has better interference handling, improved telemetry range and the ability to actually get it working on the EU LIGO 868MHz band. There will be tests of this and of the beta firmware on the 433 MHz system running alongside the noisy F765 wing to see if it really makes any difference, but those tests will be in a separate video. 
the FPV camera that best fit in the allotted space was actually the Runcam Phoenix 2 Nano with its thickening adapter and a metal mount attached to it. Didn't even have to glue it in, just had to force it in the hole and it was in there for good. Used the provided wiring channels to route the cables to the video transmitter compartment and then to the flight controller. I do have to say though, I also installed another one like this on the Flying Dragon when I mounted the gimbal on it and I was seriously impressed by its image quality, definitely better than any Swift I've used up until this moment which really surprised me given the size of this unit. Definitely worth a look if you haven't already and need something light and compact. I also used a solo tank video transmitter on this build as it is light and powerful and those compartments seem to be well ventilated which will help cool down its hot temper. So just like that pretty much the plane was ready to go and this took literally no time at all. Last but not least I glued on one of the HD camera mounts that would allow the use of my DJI Osmo action camera and strapped it on there. Also the 4S3P 18650 lithium ion battery pack finished up the build and took the all up weight to around 1480 grams. Keep in mind that this battery along with the 125 gram DJI camera in the nose meant that the plane needed some tail weight now, so I added 135 grams to get it balanced properly, so all up weight for the Maiden was around 1615 grams. Not a light plane by any measure, but I was curious to see how it will do at that weight. Also, this being a flying wing, I thought not to leave things to chance, so I programmed auto takeoff as a mode this time on a separate switch and I did use it. While testing the motor and prop, I did notice that the prop stalls pretty severely at full throttle during static thrust tests, which means that the plane is not getting the best amount of push from a standstill, which means I will need to play around with some other props to see what will work better, probably an APC-8 prop, I've had very good results with the 8x8 before, but for the time being I wanted to see what the stock gear can do. This thing was heavy so I handed the radio over to my friend to flick the switch and was going to do an overhead throw which is also a first for me so don't judge too harshly. After a small dip it nosed up and started gaining altitude. Keep in mind that at this time I had not dialed in any additional reflex to the one the airframe already has and by dialed in I mean I had not trimmed it up from the radio or mechanically. I do feel like it was a bit nose heavy though and indeed after switching to manual mode later on the plane did need some up elevate trim and also some right elevon trim as it was rolling to the left a good deal some of which could clearly be attributed to the motor and prop but not all of it. I trimmed it to fly level in manual mode which required maxed out trims on both axes which I will have to adjust later on mechanically so I can reset the trims and hence not have the autopilot accept them as stick commands. Some of you might suggest the auto trim function but I've not really read into that or used it before so think I prefer to do it the old fashioned way for now. But let's get back to the plane. It did fly well actually and I did do an auto tune very early on because I do have telemetry running through the Dragonlink system and I did have it connected via Bluetooth from the Dragonlink transmitter module to my laptop so I engaged auto tune from the laptop. Now before and after the auto tune the plane was doing some yaw wagging so nothing new there. A flying wing that can't fly straight. That being said, it is barely visible on the 4K recording of the DJI Osmo action camera, though granted it does have some pretty good stabilization, but still, it wags its tail, which is expected for a wing, I think, but also means the footage from a non-stabilized HD camera would be barely watchable, but then again, who flies without a GoPro nowadays and they do have some nice stabilization as well. If you guys know of a setting or some mod that can solve that wag, please, I'm all ears, go crazy in the comments below. Aside from the wagging, it did fly better than any other wings I've had, though none at this size and weight, but still, it was noticeable. Also, I did like the speed at which it was cruising at that weight and did appreciate the quick altitude gains if it was throttled up to do so. This would mean it could reach the clouds quicker, which is always nice. The battery did not seem to be in any hurry to run out soon, so it should be able to spend a good deal of time in the clouds once it reaches them quickly. I did fly it a bit more, played around with it, tested return to land as a mode, also failsafe with the radio off, it all worked well. 
even gave the cruise mode a try shortly since I could now have takeoff on a separate switch, thought I'd put cruise as a replacement for auto on the main three position switch I use and it also seemed to work well in maintaining heading and altitude so I was happy. I had never used cruise mode before so thought why not. At that point I decided to land and do the mechanical trim of the plane but the landing didn't really go according to plan due to a bump on the ground which resulted in the camera flying off along with the plywood mount which pretty much ended the flight day. I was impressed by the landing skids though as they did an awesome job of keeping the foam away from harm. There wasn't even a scratch on the foam on the bottom so seems like the skids do work as intended. Well done Sonic model. Later that day I did print out a proper video transmitter antenna mount that I got off of Thingiverse and also designed and printed a new camera mount to replace the plywood one for the DJI Osmo action. Next time I made it to the flying field I did leave all of the trims on the radio but did a few other changes to see what the result will be. Since the battery also tore its mount off I decided to put in some velcro and try to move it back so I can balance the plane without the need for the weights at the back. Removing 135 grams from the plane would be quite a change indeed. This worked since moving it back a few centimeters did allow me to remove all of the weights and I did make an effort to balance it more neutral at the CG markings but that is yet another thing I ponder. Are those CG markings actually in the right place? With these changes though the next takeoff was noticeably different as the plane didn't dip at all after I threw it and just hit it up instead. So I assume 10% lighter combined with the up trim combined with a more neutral CG does make a difference. Also not being nose heavy meant that it required less throttle to keep altitude but that also meant it was going a bit slower too but that was okay. Tail wag was still there though, did not seem to have been altered in any way, guess that is something one just has to live with on these models. I did try to put some distance between me and the plane but the tracker started losing the data packets pretty early on which meant there is some interference getting into the video feed and the only explanation I have at this time and the most obvious by far is simply the extreme proximity of the power cables to the video cabling and some of the components. That I will address soon as well and hopefully it will allow me to go a good deal further out. A bit later on in the flight there were some clouds forming nearby and I did try to reach them but sadly they weren't close enough for this troubled video system to make it there. After that I let the plane run away point mission to do something of an endurance run and I did get over 80 minutes though the ESC then cut off the battery so I guess I will have to program it to lower the cut off voltage to the lowest possible option to allow for the battery to be discharged a bit more. The interesting thing about this situation is that I didn't pick up on that immediately so the plane spent a bit of time with a non-working motor and with an upped elevator trying to continue the mission and maintain the altitude essentially becoming stalled and it didn't tip stall which made it sort of an unplanned stall test and it was looking pretty good. I took control of it and while coming down for the landing I did let it glide for a bit and it did look stable with no indications that it will dip a wing at any moment which was quite reassuring. I did wonder though whether I can get away with moving the battery just a bit more to the rear but we'll have to think about it. Wings are not easy to handle once they become tail heavy. This time the landing was a lot better, no cameras went flying off into the sunset though by this time the DJI Osmos battery had died so no 4k recording of that sadly. Important thing is the plane came back in one piece, landed well and is ready to fly for at least another day. Now with this out of the way I'd like to say a word about today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online skill sharing platform offering a wide variety of online courses on a host of topics. For instance there are a number of courses on how to design your very own PCB boards which is a useful skill in today's world or perhaps a course or two on how to design for 3D printing and how to 3D print whatever your heart desires which always comes in handy and its applicability goes far beyond the RC hardware. 
hobby. Also, you may want to take up whimsical painting to calm your nerves down from repairing your crashed plane all day long, for instance. Since I am now in the process of renovating what would be my future home, I am finding these interior design lessons quite useful, which opens up a whole host of new ideas for me to consider. Basically, if you are looking to gain a new skill or a few, Skillshare is the place to do it. No ads, no nonsense, just learning in a great community. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link will get a one month free trial to premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So have at it! In the next Arwing Pro video I will do some intentional stall tests both in 5 by wire A and in manual mode and we'll see if the component rearrangement will make any difference on the video system. Also, we'll mechanically trim out the plane and reset the radio trims and may even try it with the 4S2P lithium battery just as an experiment to see how it will fly when I remove another 200 grams from its all up weight. A prop test or two might be in order so I can compare to the stock one and see what the differences will be, which one is more efficient and which one makes for an easier throw. So, there is a bit more work to be done on this one. At least no fuselage mods are needed, at least not at this time. No name changes required either, that was a refreshing break from the usual of late. Now, if you have found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider commenting or in any other way engaging with this video as it helps it get seen more and helps my channel grow. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will help support this channel and my family at no additional cost to you. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. I wish you all successful takeoffs and landings and I will see you in the next video.